was having a lot of fun with the rocket project last year, but I realized that I, was, I just wasn't going to get anywhere without having a place to build it and get serious. So now that we have the workshop built, we can get serious about the rocket project. A lot of people were confused about the goals of the rocket project because, of course, that's not going to make any lift. But I'm not building the rocket engine right now. What I'm building is all the stuff around the rocket engine. We have the plumbing, the electricals, the igniter, and most of all, what I want to work on today, which is this, the little like control panel, which I have plans. Just a second. I thought that this was empty, not full. All right. So these are some random things that I found at the recycling center out in California. I think these are pressure gauges for um, up to like 3,000 psi, and these are solenoid valve pieces that they're at least compatible with these, but they're bigger, and so they're just missing the, the modules that power it on the outside. Oh no, I see. They're pneumatically driven, so you put compressed air in there. That actually might be pretty useful. Either way, more goodies to use. Other weird low pressure valves and high pressure valves. These are 172 bar, 2500 PSI. That might be handy for the rocket project, but I wasn't meaning to find anything in here. I mean, what I want is to take one of these boxes and have a control panel here and have all the display and switches and stuff like that. But I'm also going to see about possibly um, computerizing that and having a, a data bus. So well, that's going to be a bit more complicated. And honestly, for now, what I really want to do is I just, I just want to get it to where I can toggle the two solenoid valves so I can actually do tests and so then we can do the next step which is experimenting with injectors because now that I have a big drill press we can drill the holes and thread them so we can actually screw injectors into the injector manifold of the, the engine and we can use my new lathe well 105-year-old uh, lathe for making the little little injectors, and I'm not quite sure which metal I'll use, but stainless steel might be a good bet. I think I have some rods of stainless steel we can try. And I thought I might be able to to um, to get full control out of that with just one extension cord. So I'll, I'll modify a three-prong extension cord. Well, I'll make this thing modified. I won't actually modify the cord. So what was ground will be like live, and then the other two pins will be the other wires for each of the solenoids. So I'll be able to just flip them on and off from here and be like 100 feet away, and those should turn on. And um, as for the igniter coil I'll just have that connected to where it's always on during the test because I don't think it's going to burn up the relay I think it should be fine so just a matter of putting this together and seeing if it's wired up right all these switches came from well pretty much the garbage I'm gonna not I'm going to refrain from using the really old switches like the nice old porcelain ones from the 1930s I'm still getting my, my boxes sorted out from the, the cleanup. But yeah. It's also really nice because I've really started being organizing all of my junk and I've have now I have like two old boxes of just electronic stuff, which is really nice.
it has come to my attention that since I will be using the ground pin for this, then this entire cage will be live. So let's use a plastic one instead. It might be a bit smarter. Just a bit. That's one significant downside to digging things out of the trash. These connectors never come with the little screw in the middle. Ah, oh, it's working perfectly. So now I can just take this and put an extension cord between those and let's, let's see. So that is propane and that's oxygen. So white is oxygen and black is propane. That works. I could find a nice plate for that. That would be really nice. And you know what? I do. I have these, which would be great for the starter, the igniter. These are also in that box of wires and stuff that my neighbor gave me when he was cleaning out his garage. These are really thin wires. Wow. Wire nuts will be good enough for now. I know they're not very good, but when there's a chance of the entire thing catching on fire and blowing up in a field, I mean, I kind of don't care at this point. 
I'm going to take that and twist these together. That should be enough for now. And there we go. Ready for the first test. I'll go get a 12 volt battery charged and hopefully this Sunday, me and my father can take it out to his farm and, well, okay, there used to be a farm, but the previous owner sold off the land. It's a, a big, a big place with open fields that no one's going to really get upset if, if anything blows up there. So this will be for the 12 volt to the igniter. And then we'll have that to control the oxygen, the gaseous oxygen and the propane. I suspect that since I only have very rough holes drilled into the injector, like manifold or the injector plate, and I'm not really designed well enough to be called a manifold yet, I don't think it's going to really ignite very well. And so the first tests might not be very interesting. But I can always put a torch underneath it and we can see if that'll help too. Well, that's a very quick little update. I just wanted to remind you guys that I got it out of storage and I am working on it. And I hope to do a, our first test pretty soon. This is exciting. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little update before the first test. And thank you very much for watching. See ya.